and welcome to Rockingham for the Design 911.com Porsche Championship. Mixed weather conditions here today with black clouds coming over the circuit and plenty of wind around. It's going to make life very interesting for race one as I hand you over to Richard. Thanks Lloyd, here's how the championship table looks as we enter the halfway stage of the season. Dave Clark leads the championship from Alfred Piesinger who leads the Porsche 924s. Jason Flegg second in that competition. Jerry Taylor is fourth, then Stephen Brown and Rick Steyer in completing the top six. Pole position to Dave Clark with Jerry Taylor alongside, Rick Styrin and John Beerman on row two, brother David Beerman and Mike Seller on row three, then Nick Hull and Guillaume Grouchet. Dave Hughes and Steve Boyles on the fifth row, Stephen Brown and Adam Croft on row six, then it's Sean Siddle, Martin Braybrook, Mark Marshall and Andrew Hannington. Mark McAleer returning to the championship, Jason Flegg next to him, then Mark McKenzie and Martin Hall, Rebecca Jackson, Paul Bravo, Jeffrey Hansen, Anthony McVinsky, Stephen Potts and Alfred Piesinger class leader at the back of the field with it all to do. Dave Clark, who has already proved he can win any time, any place, anywhere, sports a new livery, brings the number one car into pole position once again. Jerry Taylor is on his outside with Rick Styrin and John Beerman on row two. David Beerman makes a slow start from fifth place, but that gives us a great view of the stellar Mike Seller, who's off to challenge the front runners. Close start from the 924s shows how the wide open spaces of Rockingham can provide some spectacular action. Three wide in places around turn one and down into Dean. Clark leads from Taylor with Mike Seller, but not for long as John Beerman makes his move as they go into Yentwood. Unusually for Rockingham, everybody through the first few corners safely but the conditions are changeable around this long circuit. The first to find that out is Guillaume Grouchet, who suffers this spin at the S's. The battle for third place continues. Mike Seller chasing Beerman onto the main straight and dropping below the white lines on the inside at turn one to get through. Beerman won't give up without a fight, however, and he's making Seller to work hard. Watch Seller's car have a momentary wobble as he exits the hairpin. Chase continues down the straight, and Beerman reclaims third place as the cars exit the right-hander at Yentwood. Alfred Piesing has promised to buy the burgers if he wins from the back of the grid in the 924s. And this is his onboard from the start. He's got some work to do, and he's straight on the case, moving through the traffic. A small tap on his rear end from Mark Marshall catches Alfred's back bumper. Marshall has a half spin and he's onto the grass. In the box to Mike Seller has now been caught by Rick Styron, who makes his move at Yentwood. Meanwhile, a squeal of tyres tells us that Nick Hull is another driver to spin away. Rick Styrin's charge is absolutely unstoppable and he passes John Beerman for a possible podium position, up into third. The 924 racing is as entertaining as ever. Stephen Brown and Andrew Hannington here battling for second place. Alfred Piesinger is making excellent progress and up to fifth challenging Mark McAleer for fourth. The determination from the championship leader is evident. Look how close he gets to the notorious Rockingham wall. Clark still leads Taylor in the boxsters and he just cannot shake him off at the moment. Meanwhile, there's a change for lead in the 924s. Look at this impressive move from Andrew Hannington from third into the fir into first position. 
but the bigger picture shows us that all of the top five cars are in with a shout of the lead. At least that is until Alfred Piesinger gets caught out rejoining the main straight. A spin for the championship leader but he will rejoin in fifth position. The lead boxsters are dealing with the back mark as well. And they're still at it hammer and tongs too. As they come up to the Dean hairpin it's time to lap the 924 leaders and maybe a chance for Taylor to make his move. Taylor gets crossed up at the S's, but recovers to put a good run along the main straight. And that enables him to pass his teammate for the lead as they head into turn one. John Beerman rotates, that's going to drop him down to fifth overall and in the boxsters. Meanwhile, Clark wants the lead back and he's giving his teammate Taylor a very hard time as the pair wind their way round the circuit on the last lap. Taylor, though, soaks up the pressure and takes his first win in the class with Clark close behind in second position. But what about the 924s? That goes the way to Steve Brown, his third successive win in the class. Andrew Hannington second from Adam Croft in third place. Former champion Mark McAleer crosses the line in four. Here's confirmation of the Porsche Boxster result. Jerry Taylor taking his first win with Dave Clark in second. Rick Styring completes the podium in third place. Then David Beerman heading home brother John and Mike Seller in sixth position. On to the 924, Stephen Brown wins from Andrew Hannington. Adam Croft in third position. Returning champion Mark McAleer in fourth from Alfred Fiesinger. And Martin Hall comes home in sixth. It was all about the weather, quite frankly. And um, I guess, you know, we're all looking out of the awning, looking up at the skies, looking where the wind's blowing, the wind kept changing. We're not quite sure where to go with it. Well, we had a perfect setup for a wet race and it dried really quickly by like 10 seconds a lap in three laps. So uh, whilst we had a nice advantage to start with, Jerry certainly came through strong as it dried out and he struggled to keep him behind. The problem we had on parts of the track, it was very dry. And then some of the infield was just like ice. So the first couple of laps gauging how quick to go or not to go was virtually impossible. Well, actually it was fantastic. Uh, I think you saw in qualifying, I had a bit of a shunt so I could, couldn't get really a time in, so I had to start right, right at the back, the bank, yeah. right at the back. Got the Motors TV camera installed to, to get some action going and uh, <laughs> it was really good. You know, I had a very good start and I think uh, in the first corner, I think it took four or five cars mm. and then I was up and running. Jerry Taylor on pole position with Dave Clark alongside, then Rick Styron and David Beerman, John Beerman and Mike Seller row three, then Steve Boyles and Nick Hull. Dave Hughes and Steve Brown row five, then Andrew Hannington and Adam Croft. Mark McAleer and Alfred Piesinger, Guillaume Gruchet and Martin Hall on the eighth row. Geoffrey Hansen and Martin Braybrook on the ninth row, Mark Marshall and Sean Siddle on the tenth. Anthony McVinsky and Mark McKenzie, Paul Bravo, Stephen Potts and Rebecca Jackson complete the grid. Green flag from the back of the field here at The Rock and the cars heading down into that daunting Turn 1. Conditions slightly better. You can see cloud movement there down at Turn 1. No sign of rain at the moment. Great start from everybody. David Beerman from fourth position. Looks like he is challenging Rick Styring. That's the silver fronted car. Mike Seller again is stellar at the start and up into fourth position. Challenging for third around Turn 1 in the yellow car but side by side for the race lead. It's Jerry Taylor, Dave Clark on the outside in white, John Beerman coming up the inside as well, the red car with the black front on it, and around the Dean Hairpin the first time. Now the significant thing here is that Clark has got the line down into Yentwood. Dave Clark takes the lead, and but how, oh, he's got on the grass. Clark runs wide and through, back into lead position goes Jerry Taylor. So Jerry Taylor back into the lead, Dave Clark in second position. Rick Styron in third position, 
at the moment in the 99 car. So the positions as they pretty much as they finished the first race. Heading now down the a short straight into the Tarzan hairpin, named after one of the corners at the Zandvoort Grand Prix circuit. And then it'll go on the school straight, which is actually a, a slight climb up the school straight. And one of the few places you can't see from the main Rockingham building here because it's down behind the racing school building. And then through into the Brook S's, so the car's heading through there now. So Jerry Taylor leading as they come up towards the end of lap one. Dave Clark looks up the inside. Slightly tighter line from Clark as they emerge back on the main oval. The, the purpose of rocking originally was built as a, a big oval circuit to stage American style racing. And there's still some oval racing that, that goes on. Although the big V8 cars no longer currently run as Clark looks up the inside side by side around turn one down into the hairpin. And this is what we often see on this on the brakes. Oh, and Clark's outbreaks himself there. That is a common thing you see going into Dean at Rockingham. Up into second place goes Rick Styrin. So Styrin's through. I think we've possibly lost John Beerman as well. So there is David Beerman, car number 87, putting pressure on the third place car, Dave Clark. How often is it we see Dave Clark in third? Not too often, I can tell you. With so much racing going on in the world, you'd have to be a four-headed monster to keep up with it all. Luckily, we have that. Join Peter Keane, Bill Wood, Errol Tucker, and their guest driver analyst each week for an opinionated look at the news coming out of the racing world. Remember, it's GoRacingTV.com for all your racing and video needs. Welcome back to Rockingham. Let's relive the moment where the race lead came under threat for Jerry Taylor. Up the inside goes his teammate, championship leader Dave Clark, but too fast into the hairpin, and that's what can happen at Rockingham. You can use that runoff and come back. Oh, and there's a problem for John Beerman as well on the on the way into the hairpin, but Dave Clark manages to recover and just nips across ahead of John Beerman's brother David to recapture third place. David having a good look up the inside in the 87 car. So Jerry Taylor, the race leader, we're looking at the third place man, championship leader in his very immaculately newly relivered car in third position, Rick Styrin in second place. So Dave Clark, the 41-year-old from Southampton in Hampshire, company director in automotive and aviation electronics. Car prepared by Jerry Taylor's concern and a lot of motor racing experience for Dave Clark. And he's trying to close in on the 99 car of Rick Styrin, the 40-year-old from Leeds, company director of Styrin Motors. It's a kart racer, race with a lot of success in karting, did Rick Styrin. And uh, as many people do, took a bit of time off to concentrate, getting his business up and running, but now thankfully back out and racing and entertaining us in the Design911.com Porsche Championship, run by the BRSCC, the British Racing and Sports Car Club, who put on some superb action up and down the country and Rockingham Circuit, which is near Corby in Northamptonshire, providing us the venue for today's action. Styrin hangs on to second, but here comes Clark side by side for second place, and Dave Clark goes through. Brilliant manoeuvre by Dave Clark up into second position. Well, a podium wasn't out of the question, of course, because he was in third, but the man who has dominated the Porsche Championship over the last year or so, back into second position as we go and look at the 924s Alfred Piesinger in car number 18 up into second position there ahead of Adam Croft side by side they come out of turn four and across the stripe down behind them we've got Sean Siddle Mark McKenzie Andrew Hannington and Piesinger in second position in car number 18 the 94s have put on some crack they still put on some cracking racing heading towards really being one of the, the classic side of the championship, but look how close they all are. Hannington at the back of this quintet of cars at the moment and uh, offered a podium finisher. Stephen Brown, I think, currently leads the 924s uh, ahead of these, but I think we're going to get a change here 
as Croft looks to the inside line but he in turn comes under pressure now from Sean Siddle the man from Holt shoe retailer by trade and he's up on the inside line fantastic stuff Mark Marshall's going to come up and have a go as well Mark Marshall company director at Flegg Transport I don't think we've got Jason Flegg in the race today which is a shame but Marshall in car number two having a good go and now a challenge for second position up on the inside goes Sean Siddle on the inside of Alfred Piesinger here's how it played out Siddle through on the inside but carries too much speed and spins now oh bang Piesinger tries to avoid him clouts him and goes off into the ground that is notoriously difficult to get out of the gravel here at Rockingham look the, the second third and fourth away in the distance and Alfred Piesinger the championship leader finds himself out of the race and now the scrap for second position between these cars currently led by Adam Croft Andrew Hannington trying to go around the outside of Mark Marshall Marshall in car number two hangs on to third position so all that really very much about a championship scrap as they come up across the line Adam Croft looking pretty comfortable at the moment in that second position 924 is lapping around here around about 10 seconds off the pace of the Boxsters and we'll take some Boxster action now and it's Nick Hull from Steve Boyles with Dave Hughes in the mix as well at the back of the pack the 53 car and these drivers thrashing it out at the moment for sixth position Nick Hull with the upper hand you can see ahead of them the man in fifth place Mike Seller the yellow car Stella Seller as he shall henceforth be known off the start like a rocket ship in both of the two races Mike Seller and uh, he no doubt enjoying his racing change on here Steve Boyles looking at the inside line as they come down into the hairpin late on the brakes can't quite do it Nick Hull confidently sweeps around the outside not think that was Rebecca Jackson's car parked up on the outside of the hairpin a 924 retirement and uh, Hull and Boyles continue on their battle you've got to say that Dave Hughes just dropping away a little bit at the moment down in 8th position 9th is Guillaume Grouchet Martin Braybrook's out in the boxers as well this weekend car number 41 if we manage to catch a look at him but out front Jerry Taylor is he going to make it a double this weekend Jerry Taylor looking very good value for money in the 16 car there is his teammate Dave Clark in 2nd position already the boxers as you can see working their way through the 924 field Nick Hull coming under pressure again for that seventh position Steve Boyles this time is he going to be able to draw level yes he does and Nick Hull goes oh, straight on onto the grass it was Rebecca Jackson wasn't it it was off on the outside and through comes Dave Hughes so Dave Hughes makes the most of that mistake as well and comes through as we go back to the battle between Mark Marshall and Andrew Hannington this is the scrap for third position in the Porsche 924s out of the school hairpin sorry Tarzan here been onto the school straight and now down towards the Brook S's left hander immediate right hander left hander again onto the main straight through the right hand part if you're big and brave you can hold on to the outside line at the second part grab the inside for the next corner as we go back down the order and pick up car number nine Mark McAleer the former champion in the Porsche 924s has been running in the Porsche Driving Club of Great Britain Championship and great to have him back in the 924s very much enjoying his racing here at Rockingham but uh, coming under pressure and about to be passed so he does indeed lose out of position down into the Dean Hairpin they go they'll look away uh, in the distance it was Mark McKenzie wasn't it that uh, put the pass on Mark McAleer so that's down in 17th position overall so Mark McKenzie now ahead of Mark McAleer that's a good scout for McKenzie man from uh, Bessingham runs the uh, McKenzie Hotel Group car prepared again by Victoria Motorsport and last year was his debut year so for a newcomer to pass an ex-champion is uh, very good stuff indeed meanwhile Sean Siddle his uh, teammate coming under a bit of pressure here from the race leader Jerry Taylor goes through safe and well manages to lap the number 11 car 
just ahead of them now it's Martin Braybrook in the 41 box though he's going to be lapped by the race leader as well Jerry Taylor on for fastest lap 133.32 for Taylor Stephen Brown fastest man in the 924s looking to make it four wins in succession so great news for Brown let's just take a quick look back lights are blaze from the second place man Dave Clark is still there he's managed to lose the attentions of Rick Styron at the moment so things have very much settled down in the Porsche Boxster battle as Taylor goes on to the main straight still quite a bit of traffic for him to deal with out front Andrew Hannington is going to be his uh, next target there is Andrew in the 22 car IT consultant by trade car prepared by Albert Motors and a long history of racing Porsches BW Vento runner as well in the past and uh, raced with us in the Porsche Championship since 2008 but Jerry Taylor really getting away he's absolutely mastered the Rockingham circuit ex Caterham racer and I've seen a fair few good Caterham races here at Rockingham where slipstreaming really comes to, onto its own and there is the chequered flag it's a race win number two of the weekend for Jerry Taylor who takes the win there coming through for second position is going to be Dave Clark so Dave Clark takes second position here is that scrap in the 924s Rick Styron's running third in the Boxsters and Adam Croft is there and he's going to take second position Adam Cross going to take second position in the 924s here they come up across the line now number five takes it Andrew Hannington in third position in class followed by Mark Marshall but the man taking the plaudits once again in the design911.com Porsche Championship was Jerry Taylor Taylor wins from Clark Rick Styron in third place from David Beam and then Mike Seller and Dave Hughes in sixth position in the 924s, the race win once again goes to Steve Brown. Well, I've got a reasonable start. Um, it was a bit of a drag race for myself and Dave Clark into turn one, into the hairpin. Um, Dave managed to sort of slip down the inside of me. Um, then went a little bit wide. I attacked, got past him. Second lap, he did exactly the same, but going into the hairpin off of the banking, completely outbraked himself and went straight on. Gave me a bit of a lead and I thought, oh, he's going to be coming out in 6th, 7th or 8th place. Looked at my mirror and blow me, he's third. Dave, an interesting second race. <laughs> um, what can we say about it? Well, I was praying for this rain about 25 minutes ago, to be <laughs> honest. Jerry's had stunning pace in the dry and uh, if Venice couldn't touch him. I made a mistake. I mean, we had a great start. Three corners side by side, both very fair, no, no paint damage. But uh, I made a mistake, Jerry got by and I was, to be honest, never coming back. I'm very pleased with two podiums. I have to say both Jerry and Dave, um, a mixture of them driving probably better than me, car set up better than me, third place was the best I could manage this weekend, did the best we could with what we had, the track focus team's doing very, very well, but they just had the edge this weekend and I couldn't stay with them. In the 924, Stephen Brown takes the win with Adam Croft in second place and Andrew Hannington in third. Fourth goes to Mark Marshall with Sean Siddle fifth and Mark McKenzie coming home in sixth. Championship table looks like this. Dave Clark still leading the championship. Jerry Taylor up into second from Stephen Brown, who takes over at the head of the 924s. Alfred Piesinger in fourth from Jason Flegg and Rick Styron in sixth. Well, that's it from Rockingham. Join us next time when we're racing at Brands Hatch. <laughs>